And we're back with Richard Reviews. Today we're reviewing a manga from Richard Reviews himself here on richardreviews.com slash griffinchestnut. Today, Richard is reviewing for us his personal prized possession, this beautifully articulated, illustrated manga from Hayao Mizaki himself, titled Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. This is the original piece that was uh, published through Japan through a culmination of different stylistic interpretations that ultimately grew into a fabricated and most delightful uh, motion picture which uh, had the voices of none other than Shia LaBeouf from the Transformers universe uh, through the um, Transformers, the musical director, and the Disney star Shia LaBeouf. So thank you, Mr. Hayao Miyazaki. Today's piece that Richard is reviewing for us is, of course, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. This was given to Richard in the year 2014, and he completed the entire series in the year 2014 as well. Uh, this, of course, being Volume 1, and he completed Volume 2 in the same year as well. Richard was thus a fan of uh, Hayao Miyazaki's work and continued to read and watch all the original Studio Ghibli works. So this piece that stands right in front of you ultimately led to the birth of Studio Ghibli. Many people don't consider it the first actual Studio Ghibli um, story because this developed into the the movie itself and they consider Castle in the Sky often referred to as La Punta uh, the first one that was brought to us by Studio Ghibli but um, in an interview with Hayao Miyazaki he said that everybody who worked on Castle in the Sky that was a part of Studio Ghibli was there for making Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind years prior it's just they just didn't have that name and that company logo um, yet, which is to say it's a beautiful, beautiful story. This, of course, is Richard's personal piece. We're going to take very good care of it uh, since he takes very good care of his stuff. This is a rare edition, uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, um, Volume 1. Okay, so it's an official manga piece setting that Richard uh, kept his eyes on, and he was able to make the purchase where he drove, I believe it was 26 miles to the east, 37 miles to the northwest, 16 miles to the south, and 42 miles to the north. So he did well, and he traveled a long time for this because he had his um, infinite passion on this project and he wanted to make sure that the finite data and the amplitude was real. So the frequency and time that he had so he can read this was all allocated to him and allotted in a perfect manual stance. It's like a transform, also known as a DFT. So Richard um, theoretically wrote out his plan to read this entire piece and nonetheless, his uh, hypothesis and theory went according to plan as he was able to read the entire piece in a timely fashion, just as he predicted. Uh, this goes, of course, with one of his fantastic science experiments that went flew under the radar, as Jack Nicholson starred in the movie One Flew Under the Cuckoo's Nest, which was, of course, uh, based on an original piece uh, written none other than Ken Kelsley, uh, who was the um, hippie who met Jack Kerouac in the 1960s and started uh, with Neil Cassidy, the school bus converted into a RV who um, was later named and abbreviated and titled the bus further, driven across the country by Neil Cassidy in a cocaine and amph amphetamine crackdown streak resistance crack horror. This was filmed, none other than um, many others of the Merry Pranksters, of course, with Mr. Tom Wolfe himself, which was negotiated in his own piece titled The Kool-Aid Acid Electric Test, which featured the Merry Pranksters. 
So we're going to take a look at this piece. This is a very um, public and private piece from Richard, but we have to take very good care of it. And it is a magnum, uh, magnum opus piece, as you can tell. Okay, so the condition of this piece right here, as you can tell, front condition is gorgeous. The whole piece is in perfect, perfect condition, and we're going to keep it that way. Okay, front cream, very good, very good front cream. Side cream, very good side cream. And even bottom cream, more very good bottom cream. Okay, so on this side, we have what appears to say, um, from top to bottom, Nozaka of the Valley of the Wind, Hayu Mazayaki, and this is uh, volume one. And on the back, there is um, a notable ledger. This is a very big piece, um, Bible-like study. So we can we can tell with um, pretty good courage what exactly is inside. So with these uh, magnum pieces, you can tell first few pages of these mangas are in color. Okay, as you can tell, it's a beautiful color of the story as it progresses through and a little bit of the stylistic language that shows the um, your growth of the world. After the story starts, the color no longer continues as we're going into the deluxe edition copied uh, through and through the buried um, society of the notion of this beautiful piece of artwork. And the entire piece is like this, with these very detailed drawings of cataclysmic, um, apocalypto-stylistic versions of the future, of where humanity is ultimately succumbed to a beautiful and heroic notion. Richard thought that this piece was one of Hayao Miyazaki's best pieces, and uh, it deserves all the praise that he ultimately got. And he was glad that it was featured into a film. Uh, for the man known as Hayao Miyazaki, there's not much you can say that hasn't already been said, so we're going to thank him for that. So this piece goes on, and uh, this is the volume one, so the first section. Uh, I believe uh, chapter three follows the uh, Dorak War, which can be cultivated into three different synchronizable plots. And, um, this is where the action starts, and this is where the fun gets funner. As we keep going, Richard thought that the action climax was no most notably uh, paralleled uh, to the movie, the American movie by James Cameron, uh, Titanic, in which the ship hit the iceberg and a lot of the main characters ended up perishing in the woods and in the desert below. So towards the end we have here, we don't want to ruin the, the ending for you, but um, we do finish here and then it picks up in volume two, which Richard also read and we will be reviewing here on YouTube as well for Richard. Uh, this is all the, um, the sound effects along with um, any more spry and dangerous mark artwork with her official Wind Rider uniform outfit of the Sea of Corruption, which is detailed and magnified in such an appropriate stance. And of course we have the picture of the author himself, Mr. Hayao Miyazaki himself. Let's get a close-up of him. He's done an amazing job creating this artwork, this fan fiction, and this glorious magnitude of a beautiful piece of art that he can give us today. Uh, he was born in Tokyo, and he's a magnificent man, so we have to thank him for giving us the Studio Ghibli co-founded Berlin Film Festival and Oscar for Animated Best Feature Film at the Academy Awards. Thank you, Mr. Hayao Miyazaki. We have Richard to thank for you. So thank you, Richard, and thank you for all of that. Um, of course, uh, this is Richard's personal piece, which we will keep in very good condition, and... Uh, Richard gives this piece two thumbs up, way up, for one of the best mangas that he has ever read, and uh, this is, of course, a um, beautifully uh, articulated and illustrated piece of work, and um, Richard has read many a manga in his day, probably over 51 in the year 2014 alone, and this being one of them, and this remains one of Richard's favorites, so 
Catch us next time as Richard will be reviewing Volume 2 of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And catch him next time for reviewing more of Hayao Miyazaki's mangas based on the base part of the New York Centrism of the United States of America. This, of course, has been Richard Reviews. Catch us next time here on richardreviews.com. Thank you.